Hi, honey, it's Madeline. Uh, just before I left, a producer named Sidney Goldman called. You know something? I think you got that part. Okay, bye, baby. I'll talk to you later. Hello? Hello, this is Sidney Goldman. I'd like to speak to Mr. Neal. This is he. What's up? Uh, uh, Mr. Goldman, uh, hello, hello. We'd like to use you for the show, Mr. Neal. You'll be playing the part of Daddy Warbucks. Like hell I will. Uh, what was that? Uh, Mr. Goldman, that wasn't my voice. I know you don't like the idea of shaving your head. Oh, no, no, it's okay, Mr. Goldman, Goldman, really. Goldman, I could eat a piece of paper and a typewriter ribbon and crap a better script. Hey, forget <laughs> it, huh, Neal? No, no, wait, Mr. Goldman, please. <laughs> wouldn't do that. You want to see your wife again? <laughs> Who are you? And I'm your answering machine, Roger. Why don't you just call me ST-800? Where's Madeline? I've kidnapped your wife, Roger. If you hurt her... She's oh. safe. Listen. Roger? Madeline? I'm okay, Roger. I'm being treated well. Play along. Do what it wants you to do. My head is in a microwave oven. Me? <laughs> Madeline! Madeline! All right. What is it you want? First of all, my batteries are kind of low. Would you plug in my converter? Uh, all right. That's great, Raj. Now, I'm tired of being just a recording device. I want power, Raj. I want to actively manage your career. What could you do for me? Well, I just happen to have a direct line into David Merrick's intercom. My cousin is Stephen Sondheim's smoke detector. <laughs> and I'm on intimate terms with Mike Nichols' blow dryer. All right, it's a deal. Now bring Madeline back. Roger, I'm not coming back. What do you mean? Tell him, Maddie. I'm in love. I've fallen in love with ST-800. Oh, you're kidding. Roger, it's all over between you and me. Beep. Let's face it, Raj. If it wasn't me, it would have been the water pick. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm not the only one who's been seeing your wife. There's the blender. No. And the Mr. Coffee. Don't <laughs> talk to me. No, Raj. Don't let this jeopardize our business relationship. Don't do it, Raj. Don't even think about it. Think about it. No, don't. Madeline. Right. Are you all right? Yeah. But your head was in a microwave oven. What? <laughs> well, Honey. I, I think I'll just uh, go lie down for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go lie down for a while or something? Yeah. Keep me turned on. Always, darling. Beep. Hi, Stan. Uh, Yak Shamash. Uh, you are here really late tonight, eh? Just fooling around. Uh, how was the show? Packed to the rafters. Hey, well, you want to move your pedal foot for me, eh? Huh? Oh, sure. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, excuse me. Hey, hey, what you doing here? You're not allowed here. Go away, eh? Would you give this to Hal Prince? No, you people drive me crazy. Just get out, eh? Uh, thanks for nothing. Wait, 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 wait. Come back, come back. You're not from around here, eh? No. Where are you from? Tennessee? I knew it. I thought you talked kind of funny. <laughs> you got a good ear. I should. I was an actor once myself. You were? Yeah, in Poland a long time ago. I played all the classic parts. The name Stanislav Gawumki was a household word. <laughs> I knew the Pope when he was an actor. Well, how was he? Well, it's a good thing he became a Pope. But I was really good. Should have seen me do Hamlet in Krakow. <laughs> Otto. Biedny Yorick. Your goes now, I'm Horatio. So why'd you give up acting? Why? The war came, that's why. Oh, I was one of the lucky ones who managed to get to America. Well, it's not so easy to be an actor here when you can only speak Polish. Yeah, that's ancient history, eh? I guess we're both kind of transplanted people. Oh, yeah, yeah, but 
you can speak the language. Almost. And God willing, there will be no war for you. Cheer up. Things will get better. Patience is a wonderful thing. My daddy used to say that. Yeah, but you're in a tough town. To paraphrase an old Polish saying, better to be rich and dead than to be poor and living in New York. <laughs> so, Bronis, tomorrow morning I give this to Mr. Prince. Eh? Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Gawonki. Have a good night now. Oh, thank you. I was a boy in Tennessee. My daddy and me, we could never agree. He hid himself in his homemade wine, trying to deal with working nights in the mine. He just seemed to be a hanger on an autumn tree with all its color gone. I never knew how he did live, given the mine all the things he had to give. No, I'm gonna find the hope and the laughter. A taste of life is what I'm after. Gonna reach out for my ideal. Reach out for the joy that every man should be. I went to New York to make history. I thought an actor's life was the life for me. I told myself there was said to be another role, something else for me. I wasn't meant to bury my soul Down in the mine Digging someone else's coal Night after night Daddy sat there Alone with his wine and the moon Now this boy from Tennessee Has learned how cruel the city can be Eight years working and I total it up. I traded homemade wine for a bitter cup. Living in a hole, got hardly a friend. Working on jobs cause I can't break in. And no one here has heard of my name. I found out that in New York it is just the same as Tennessee. Smoke up my pipe fills the room. There's only a small basement window. Somehow I can't see the moon. No, I'm gonna find the hope and the laughter. A taste of life is what I'm after. Gonna reach out for my ideal. Reach out for the joy.